Hey guys, today we have a special episode of Saving Green. Burger King has really made a push to be, I guess you could say the environmentally conscious or sustainable, if that's even possible, fast food option. And they have for several months now offered an impossible version of their Whopper. And just recently they announced that they are going to reduce the methane produced by their cattle um, for their beef. So let's take a look and see what Burger King's been up to. Today, I'm not in my office because my wife will kill me if I'm eating in the office, but picked up some BK. So today I got one Impossible Whopper and one regular Whopper, just to compare. What do we got here? Whopper A, Whopper B. Let's dive right in. So here we have a cross section of both burgers. We've got the standard Whopper on the left and the Impossible on the right. And just right away, you can immediately see on first glance that the thickness, texture, color, granularity of the beef or the beef product or substitute is all very similar. The weight of these burgers was pretty comparable, 9.5 ounces for the traditional Whopper, 9.3 ounces for the Impossible. So no real differences there. This top-down view of each burger, again, this is a close-up detail of the Impossible. You see just how evenly charred uh, the rim of the meat is. And the standard burger on the left basically shows uh, more irregularities just due to how the beef itself is ground. So let's start with the classic. Well, uh, it tastes like a Whopper, obviously, because that's what it is. It's got that classic Burger King smokiness to it. Some people like it, some people don't. Just mayo, pickles, onions, tomato, sesame seed bun. Pretty standard, and I've always liked the Whopper. I think it tastes pretty good. Let's try the Impossible. It really looks surprisingly similar. And it tastes very similar as well. I mean, it also picks up a little bit of that kind of flame broiled flavor. The texture is very similar. It's a little chewier, but it's good. It's definitely salty. And I think that that, you know, is one of the criticisms of Impossible in general is that their sodium content is through the roof. So from a health perspective, it may not be a whole lot better, but there definitely are some environmental advantages to plant alternatives to beef. And a lot of that has to do with methane production. So we're gonna go back into the office and we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into why Burger King is making the changes that they're doing and what kind of impacts it may have. So I'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back. Again, my name is Josh. Thank you so much for checking out Saving Green. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about being sustainable on a budget. So having tried both the Impossible and the traditional Whopper, I can attest that at least for these taste buds, they're really similar. And I think that having the option of a vegan or a non-meat alternative is really appealing. And I think it's an important step in weaning us off of kind of mass beef production and the agricultural infrastructure that is really costing both our country and the world at large a lot of resources. Whether it's fertilizer and the issues relating to runoff or whether it's land usage and the amount of trees or savannas or prairies that are converted to feedlots and storage basins and things of that nature, or whether it's methane production because these animals are not used to the kind of artificially nutrient-rich diets that they're being force-fed to grow very quickly and efficiently for slaughter. So these are all things to consider, and it's actually very complicated. Now, both Burger King and Impossible have a lot of evidence kind of backing up their claims. I'm gonna to link to both of those resources down below. Now, granted, Burger King has run into legal trouble because these burgers are cooked, I think, on the same cooktops as their meaty Whopper friends. 
So there's a lot of juices and enzymes that really probably don't make the burgers perfectly vegan. But that's just something to keep in mind. But overall, you know, these really are completely plant-based alternatives. And by engineering yeast to produce these heme molecules that will char and grill and form that Maillard reaction that we know and love in the taste of a burnt or charred, um, their flame broiled burger. It's really, it's an amazing feat of science. And they claim that over 85 to 90 something percent of resources overall, including greenhouse grass emissions can be cut down by choosing an impossible or non-meat alternative. Now beef is probably the most costly of all the agricultural animals that we use, whether it's lamb or goat or chicken. Beef really gram for gram is quite costly. So for Burger King to take the step by figuring out with research that again, I'll link down below, adding just 100 grams of lemongrass to their cow feed could reduce their methane by 30% is significant. Now methane is a extraordinarily efficient greenhouse trapping gas. It's over 20 times more effective than carbon dioxide in maintaining that thermal energy in the atmosphere. So for every gram or every gigaton of methane that's produced, it's significantly more warming than that equivalent in carbon dioxide. I think the figure is about 23 times. So, you know, one cow can produce significant amount of emissions. And I think that for every couple cows, the amount of methane that they extrude in a given year is equal to about 10,000 miles traveled in a typical four-door sedan. So, you know, that that's something to, to consider. It's not insignificant. Worldwide, industrial farming can account for upwards of 14% of greenhouse gas emissions. So if you can trim that by a third, that's certainly nothing to scoff at but it's still not gonna touch the, the type of large scale revolutionary shifts away from this mass farming that will be the greenest alternative long-term, but it's a great first step. The opportunity to try the Impossible Burger and other vegan alternatives, whether it's Beyond or Morningstar or whatever, I think that it's a good step for meat eaters like myself to try to transition away from these things. But also keep in mind that these still are indulgences and beef should be considered as such. It's not healthy. The Impossible Burger is not particularly healthy either. Um, they both contain a lot of fat, certainly, but saturated fat is extraordinarily high and sodium is a big issue. From a health standpoint, limit it maybe once a month, maybe less. And I think that that even just cutting back is gonna be a really big step towards making things greener for all of us. And the other thing to consider is that Price-wise, the Impossible Burger, at least at our local Burger King, you can see the pricing here, is really only a dollar more than the beef alternative. So when you think about it, it is it is an upcharge, but I do think that the value uh, from an environmental standpoint outweighs the extra cost, but that's a decision that you'll make for yourself. And having a greener beef alternative is still another better option than what we've got currently. So thanks again for checking out the channel. I hope you have the opportunity to try these burgers for yourself if you're so interested. And just weigh in and let me know what, what your thoughts are. So thanks again for checking out Saving Green. My name is Josh and I'll see you next time. Bye.